everybody, my name is Northern Lion, and the guys and gals at Humble were nice enough to ask me to take a look at some of the games that are coming out with the Humble Weekly Roguelike Bundle, or included in the Humble Weekly Roguelike Bundle. And I am very pleased to be taking a look at Teleglitch Die More Edition today. This is a game that, well, I talked about in Paranautical Activity, how it kind of turns the roguelike genre on its head a little bit by, you know, melding first-person shooter gameplay with kind of dungeon crawling in the same way as the Binding of Isaac, plus randomizer procedurally generated levels with different loot every time. Uh, Teleglitch also is a little bit of a break from the traditional uh, I'm just gonna start a new game here the traditional kind of roguelike type game that uh, maybe you're familiar with uh, and it's a twin stick shooter like Isaac but additionally it's way way more tense and kind of a sci-fi horror type thing going on it's a little bit like a, a top-down twin stick shooting version of Dead Space or even you know with if you take a look at the plot it's a little bit more like Half-Life or something like that Basically, we are uh, someone who was working at a military base, and we were working on an AI. The AI went rogue, and now we've got bad stuff happening, including, including like, some really terrible abominations and monsters, as well as, um, like, some, basically, like, a dark matter void that is slowly cannibalizing the rest of the base. And our objective is to figure out what's going on and actually make our way out over the course of what I believe are ten levels, even though the game is so difficult that I have very rarely made it past uh, the second or third level. So, the way that this works, I just want to point out right away, some people are turned off by the visual style of Teleglitch Die More Edition, and some people uh, are very much into it. I'm the, definitely part of the uh, latter camp. I, I'm very much into it. It kind of is a different visual style than uh, the, what you're probably used to. I, I've never really seen too many games that look like this, uh, but uh, I, I think it adds to it. It's a little bit disorienting at first, but once you get used to it, I think it... Uh, it might grow on you. You might find it growing on you. Now, the way that this game works, uh, there's some very important things to note before we really get started here. This, uh, you know, like, man here is our character, and we have a little bit of an inventory right now. We have four pieces of dynamite. Uh, we also have an empty can. That's what the 250 is, by the way. That it means that, um, that those are like 250 grams of explosives. So the more grams that you have, the higher the explosive uh, value actually is, the more damage it does, and the more area of effect it has. We also have a 9mm pistol with 45 ammo, and we have 100 out of 100 health, as you can see there. And we're actually going to use the right mouse button that will kind of allow us to uh, look around us Geometry War style in all 360 degrees to shoot if necessary. Now, we can also combine items, and as you can see right now, we can combine uh, two of our 250-gram explosives to make a 500-gram explosive like that. So I just did that just to show you how it works, but uh, the combination aspect is a huge aspect of actually getting some level of success in Teleglitch. Now... Uh, beyond just, you know, finding stuff in the environment here, uh, we also have a map screen that I'm actually going to use. Uh, oh god, uh, probably like basically ad nauseum to find my way around. We're going to encounter an awful lot of monsters, and this is really where the game becomes more survival horror-y uh, than a lot of uh, other games that kind of occupy this same genre. Um, ammo is very, very scarce. You can find it, but you usually don't find nearly as much as you actually use. There are secret areas, so I'm just seeing if maybe like this is a secret area right here. I don't believe that it is, so I'm not going to waste my explosives. Those are also uh, pretty hard to come by. Uh, but you may want to use melee weapons to actually attack enemies, but mostly you're just walking around here looking for some loot and seeing... Uh, it, you know, the loot gives you a better chance of surviving is what I'm trying to get at, but also the objective is to actually make it to a, a portal on each level, and that will allow you to go down to the next level where you'll, you'll get more of the story, but also things will become more difficult. I just want to see if we can combine anything else. So, uh, even now, just by going to that first loot box, we have some other things that we can combine here. We can make 500 gram explosives, we can make a nail bomb, that'll take our 500 gram explosive and our box of nails, or we can make a can gun with all three of them. Tin can... Filled with nails and explosives, dangerous to user. No kidding. Why don't we make a nail bomb, and maybe I'll have a chance to use that when we start running out of more ammo here. We actually have found the portal to get down to the next level, uh, and we can choose where we want to go. We can either go to the plankton farm, or we can go to the military biology sector. I should add here, uh, th there's going to be differences between each one. I, I believe the military biology sector might be more difficult. Maybe the plankton farm is... Uh, it more loot filled. Maybe there's. I, I don't really know the difference. I usually just go to the one that doesn't have military in it because it uh, probably gives me a better chance of success in my mind because I won't have to fight giant military robots. But I believe this is something that was added in the Die More edition. This Teleglitch as it uh, as it was. Is there stuff here? Ooh, yeah. Uh, there is actually. What is the Agile one? Shoots adhesive grenades. Uh, useful against swarms. So this is actually basically like a grenade launcher that launches a sticky grenade. Um, anyway. Uh, I believe this is something that was added in the Die More edition of Teleglitch, uh, because this game originally did come out on Desura last year, uh, but then they also got picked up by Paradox Interactive, who then published what is kind of like the Director's Cut edition of the game. It has a few more uh, kind of content things added to it. 
uh, not just loot, but also, or, you know, new items and stuff like that, but also, uh, kind of differential paths that you can take through the game. Not unlike, uh, The Binding of Isaac, you know, being able to go through, oh, jeez, uh, being able to go through the mines and the, uh, oh, uh, the, the catacombs, uh, or sorry, not th I'm, I'm thinking about Spelunky, we want this too. Being able to go through the, the basement or the cellar, or being able to go through the caves of the catacombs, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Let's try to use our adhesive grenade that's gonna explode. All right, that killed a couple of the enemies. It didn't necessarily do as well as I thought it would. Um, but this is really the heart of Teleglitch right here, is like backwards circle, circle strafing to get away from these enemies, and eventually there will just, in all likelihood, become a swarm that is too difficult for me to deal with. We will encounter some food that will allow us to regenerate our health. I didn't lose as much as I thought there, but hey, we got that food right away, so let's eat that. Yeah, that gave us 10 extra health. Is there anything else we can make here? No, we did pick up a tube. We could probably use that for like a, a grenade launcher or something, but for now... Uh, you know, typical kind of roguelike rules apply. I want to spend as much time as possible on the early floors of the game so I can get some items that will hopefully allow me to survive on the later floors of the game. What do we have in here? More ammo and a med kit as well as some... We, get, we got another clip there. That was, I guess, the most important thing. So yeah, I, I really like Teleglitch Die More Edition. It's one of the games that I think out of this entire bundle that I've spent more time with. Uh, I haven't spent more time with it than The Binding of Isaac, but I've spent among the most times of all of these games uh, with Teleglitch, just because it's so engaging, and if you're the kind of person who is into twin-stick shooters, or you like games that have kind of like that desolate isolation type horror to them, like a, a genuine creepiness, uh, then I think this this is going to be right up your alley if you somehow managed to avoid it up till now, and I guess that's not necessarily that unlikely. Uh, I don't know how many people have necessarily spent a whole bunch of time with uh, Teleglitch. So there are different ammo types, by the way. Um, this is, there are story things, we kind of find like primary sources for journal entries and things like that that increase the story. I'm not necessarily going to read those because I don't want to spoil the story by accident. Uh, I should point out we got some shells there. Those actually are not ammo. Oh, I mean they are ammo, but they're ammo for a weapon that we don't have. We may be able to craft or find a shotgun at some point later and then we'll be able to use those shells. But we can't do it right now. So I am, uh, you know, as you can see, even though I've found a decent amount of ammo so far, probably more than average for, for my Teleglitch standards, uh, we actually are running into way more enemies uh, than my ammo will allow me to handle while still, you know, having some left over to deal with more difficult enemies. So what I could do is actually just start punching enemies, but this is where things become uh, a little bit more tricky, because I can do damage to them, as you can see, uh, but it's not really nearly as much as uh, when I was shooting before. And it puts me at much greater risk. That being said, you are going to have to resort to melee combat probably in every single Teleglitch run that you have at some point. Uh, whether you want to do that at the start or whether you want to do that as ammo runs out uh, is up to you. But, you know, th this is a game that's very good about forcing you to be in uncomfortable situations. We actually got very lucky and found a shotgun. We only have ten shells for it, so we should probably save this for some more difficult enemies. Uh, but for now, I'm, I'm happy to have it. Well, another thing I really like about uh, Teleglitch... I don't know if I'm going to say the full title every time. Teleglitch Die More Edition. But, uh, you know, it's worth noting because there is a, an appreciable difference between this and the actual base game. Uh, but the inventory management, for a game that has an awful lot of inventory stuff going on in it, it's actually really easy to, to switch between uh, slots in your inventory. Like, for me to get from my 9mm pistol down to the shotgun, will only take, like, three seconds there. Well, less than three seconds. Three spins of my mouse button. So it's actually more intuitive than it might look. And you might be saying, like, oh, I don't want to have the inventory up on my screen at all times, uh, but you get used to it. And it's actually very valuable to have it up there, because you never know what the next room might contain. You want to use the nail box? Let's use the nail box. Or, sorry, nail bomb. So I'll walk backwards here, toss a nail bomb out here. Eh, okay, it worked, and I actually don't think I took damage out of that, which is pretty crazy. Why don't we just punch this guy to death, then? So yeah, the major strengths of the game, like a really creepy kind of horror aesthetic, or sci-fi uh, thriller aesthetic. Uh, in addition to that... Like, constantly improvising with the kind of items that you get in order to, uh, you know, create some things that are pretty, not necessarily creative, that's not the word I'm looking for, not that I, it's not creative, but create things that are, you know, different than just the constant, uh, you know, grind of, of shooting enemies over and over. Why don't we try using our shotgun a little bit just to add some variety here. There you go, got some extra canned meat there. Can we make anything else interesting? No, we cannot. We can make uh, more... 500 gram explosives. There are secret areas, and I'm just looking for them now, I haven't found any. Usually it's like, like jagged areas with like rocks kind of outcropping from them. Why don't we go down to the next floor and we'll see if maybe I encounter some more difficult resistance. The other thing that's really appealing about Teleglitch, uh, fans of roguelike and roguelikeish games, 
Actually, I want to go through this door first just to see if there's anything amazing in here. Uh, fans of roguelike and, and roguelike-ish games, you know, have maybe a bit of a stereotype for liking games that are very difficult, and Teleglitch Diamore Edition is certainly one of the most difficult games uh, out of a, a crowd of very difficult games that are included in this bundle. Uh, I have never really achieved any level of appreciable success in this game, and I respect it for that a great deal. There was absolutely nothing going on in that door. But yeah, if you find games like The Binding of Isaac too easy, Teleglitch Die More Edition uh, is probably going to do some not nice things to you over the course of your time with it. Although I have, you know, I, I played this a, a couple of times on my channel. I have gotten some people that are like, uh, you know, they, they've beaten it, and they're like, well, it was like an uphill battle. There's nobody that has played this game that has talked to me that has then been like, yeah, I played it. It wasn't difficult at all. What are you talking about? That's what I'm trying to get at, at least. So, we are going to make our way down here. I also like, really like the kind of like lighting effects, the way that the environment gets revealed uh, as you move through the uh, through the game, because it kind of creates that aspect of, like, I don't want to look around the corner just in case something's there, uh, the way that things are actually revealed. I'm, just, I'm constantly checking my map to make sure I can get back to the teleportation system here. You don't want to get lost. So when you get lost, that is when you are going to get killed. So this is our teleportation. Uh, let's take a quick look at the screen here again. Right is teleport to the plankton farm. Let's go to the military biology sector on the left, just because it sounds interesting. So, we have survived there. I actually got an achievement. This might be the... Not the first time, but this might be among the first times I've actually played the Steam edition of uh, Die More Edition. But anyway... You know, I'll actually read this out so you can get a feel for the kind of tone of the story. It's like one survivor against the world. The situation is bad, the non-human combatants are everywhere and they attack me on sight. I'm gonna try next to move through the plankton farm complex. I thought I went to the- oh, it, you're right, my left, I get you. That sector was used to feed a type of military critters we were cloning and developing about eight years ago. However, the sector was abandoned after the critter project ended. The perfect war animal prototype was shipped away with its design blueprints for production, and there was no need for producing extra plankton anymore. If I'm lucky, the sector could still be deserted, and I might be able to slip through unnoticed. Uh, I doubt it, but we'll see. So you can see your stats after you actually finish here. And unlike a lot of the games that are actually included in this, or at least a couple of the games that are actually included in the bundle, um, I'm not going to read through all of the primary accounts that we have here. Um, there actually is like a, uh, a save and continue feature that happens in the game. Oh, shit. Um, okay, let's, let's use our shotgun here. Apologies for the language, by the way. Um, okay, keep it back and onwards. Um... This is a little bit more of the teleglitch that I'm used to. I am probably going to get cut up pretty nastily here, but we'll be fine if I just ignore the soiled pants that I've just created by combining my fear with my underpants. Uh, okay. You should be dead. Okay. So I used a ton of ammo to make that happen, and I don't think we're going to... Oh, come on! I don't think we're going to get very much back here. Luckily, I do have enough canned meat. Uh, to survive for a while. You know, people always rag on spam. I don't think spam's that bad, man. It's a little salty, but apart from that, it's pretty good. Let's, uh, eat a bunch of this canned meat, take ourselves back to some level of self-sufficiency. We even got some back here, which is cool. Come on, pick it up. There we go. Uh, and we'll see what we've got inside of this crate here. Oh, it's not a crate. It's actually a journal entry. We only have 19 ammo left, which, which scares me. But yeah, it, uh, to continue on with that, uh, tangent that I was on earlier. Uh, this is one of the longer games that's included as well. Uh, you know, this and something like, uh, Dungeons of Dreadmore. Runs don't take on the order of, like, an hour. Usually they take on the order of substantially longer than that. Which is good that you can save and continue. It's, it's a feature that I think is, uh, very welcome in a game like this. I didn't realize there was a door over there. Map system, very, very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, additionally, it, it also has, like, a almost Spelunky style ability to warp if that makes sense so once you actually get to like level three you can start future runs on level three and i don't remember if you actually start with the inventory that you've gotten or if you start kind of from zero again or from one as brian mcknight might like to do oh that was really stupid of me to stand there and also i didn't do any damage to them at all um but this is still uh, important. It means that you don't have to start over every single time, which is good because a, you know, a successful teleglitch run is not going to take you on the order of 45 minutes. It might be more like 6 or 7 hours, depending on uh, the kind of things that you encounter. Mind you, this video is not going to be 67 hours long. I am having a surprisingly okay run here. I expected to die multiple times within the first few minutes. Uh, well, not a few minutes, but the the first not too long. That was a really good explosive. Uh, but now I'm out of ammo, which means I can try to, like, take out our enemies with melee attacks. But really, I am in the market for picking up some extra clips. Uh, I can also use explosives if things get really dire. 
But for now, we'll just kind of punch him and stab him with our knife here. And it's not going to work out for me well. It might seem okay in the short term, but in the long term, this is going to cause some serious issues. Is there anything? I, I can create a plate. Thick steel plate, good for building something. Okay, we'll build that, and I thought maybe we could build something else, uh, you know, off the back of that crate, but sadly not. Or the back of that plate, I should say, but sadly not. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find kind of a substantial cache of uh, weapons, but I, you know, fairly strongly doubt it. Oh, we got a nail box. Uh, can we make... No. I thought maybe we could make another uh, nail bomb out of that. Which would have been really nice because uh, the nail bomb that we used earlier actually did kill a, a good deal of enemies. So this is not like a RPG style where you're going to get experience every time you... Have I already been up there? I can't remember. Um, this is not like a RPG style where you're going to get uh, experience for killing enemies and then you're going to you know level up and then you can just punch them in the face until they are ready to die. Um, this is much more like you've got to survive uh, off the backs of the uh, inventory that you're able to obtain over the course of the game. Um, can we make anything else now? Auto pistol. This is really useful. We can make like a, an automatic... Handgun. It goes through ammo like crazy, but it's also really useful, but we don't have any ammo. We can make a nail gun. Shoots nails. Only effective at close range. Or standard assault rifle modified to operate with a drum magazine. Honestly, right now, I kind of feel like we should use, we should make the nail gun. Because now I can actually shoot nails. Um, yeah, make nail ammo, please. Yeah, more nail ammo, please. You make some nail ammo. And we'll make some nail ammo. We also we have many nail bombs as well. What else do we want to make? We can make a Panzerfaust. That'll be like one rocket launcher. And we might as well make one more nail bomb. So is this is this nail gun actually work? One second. Why can I not shoot with it? This is the first time I've ever made a nail gun. Sometimes there is a little bit of a learning curve uh, associated with the weapons. But that is half the fun as well. So there's more story stuff that, again, I don't want to spoil. We do have a, a Panzerfaust. Let's see if we can at least blow up some baddies over the course of this. More journal entries, and we actually have reached a dead end here, so I gotta go back in the other direction. This is weirding me out, because I, I thought I made a bunch of nail ammo, but I guess uh, maybe I, I bunged it up somehow. But at least now if I find a nail box, I can use that. And I also have uh, the shotgun, so if I find shells, I can use those as well. And there's nothing else we can make right now. And we have nail bombs, which is really good, uh, so that I can actually, you know, if, if necessary, use some explosives to protect myself in battle. But I am kind of feeling like... You know, I'm having to scrounge a little bit. This is like episode 8 of a Walking Dead season. Like, we, all of our food is gone, and we really need kind of good luck if we're going to make this happen. Alright, so more primary accounts. Oh, get out of there. You got punched pretty bad. Uh, what would I like to... Let's use the Panzerfaust. Alright, that was beautiful. It's a one-use-only type thing, but uh, it was fun nonetheless. Alright, get over here. I'll stab you. What is our MG? Is this... Oh, it is the machine gun. Why do we have 30 ammo for our machine gun? Maybe I accidentally created nail ammo for this? You know, automatic wep- Oh, okay, we definitely want to use like an explosive here. Automatic weapons are a, a double-edged sword because they use so much ammo, but additionally, uh, they can also do a ton of damage to like really, really nasty enemies, so... We have actually managed to- Oh, get some more machine gun bullets here, which is good. Let's try out our assault rifle and see if maybe this will help us out. Also, the, the, like, spread on the shots is pretty nasty, but in certain situations, this may actually help us out a great deal. So we're just going to use our knife or baton or whatever this is and stab the bejesus out of some more enemies. Got some more explosives. Those are always useful. And wouldn't it be just my luck if this actually ends up being the, uh, uh we don't need to use, uh, our explosives for this. Wouldn't it be just my luck if we ended up, uh... Actually, like, doing extremely well on this run. We probably won't play too much more if I get to the next teleporter. Uh, we'll kind of just end it there, because I want to save some of the, the mystery of teleglitch for you guys, uh, if you're actually going to pick this up for yourselves, and I encourage you to do so. I, I, I stand by my statement that every game in this bundle, oh no, uh, is, is good, and this is actually one of the best ones, uh, from, from my personal taste. Let's use an adhesive grenade launcher, and don't get hit yourself. Oh, they ran away once I put the grenade on him. Okay, well, we can use another nail bomb as well. That actually worked out extremely well. More canned meat for me. Um, this is one of my favorite games in the bundle for sure. Obviously, I have a soft spot for the, the Binding of Isaac, having put 400 hours into it. But I really like uh, Teleglitch Die More Edition as well. Oh, is this our next teleporter? It may or may not be. Usually when the ground changes color like that, it is. But okay, no such luck. More machine gun bullets, though, is pretty good. Let's keep going until we actually find the teleporter here. This looks like something I can interact with, but I guess I... Oh, is this it? This is it! I almost totally missed it there. 
Wow, okay, that's actually really great. Uh, a very convenient ending point. This is Teleglitch Die More Edition. Again, another nice kind of variant on the uh, roguelike formula. It's a twin stick shooter. A little bit more uh, fast paced than the Binding of Isaac, and way, way scarier, especially if you actually let yourself get into the mode or the mood of it uh, by not listening to some jerk like me just ramble over top of it. You can find all these games that I've covered so far uh, in the humble weekly roguelike sale. And, uh, you know, my stamp of approval definitely goes on Teleglitch Die More Edition as well. Pay what you want, the money goes to a good cause, and the games are all great. So if you're a fan of games like this, absolutely go pick it up. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, this episode. If you're not familiar with me, you can find more of my content on YouTube.com slash Northern Lion. And I will see you next time.